Welcome back to Berm Peak. I'm Seth, this is Alex, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. But kind of the same. So Alex is with us today because we're gonna teach him a couple of repairs. Now Alex is pretty adept at working on a bike. There are uh, I don't know about that. Maybe not so far. much. But there are a few things that we do here that Alex is really interested in, like having the multi-tool and the steer tube and shortening steer tubes so there's yes. not like a little antler sticking up over there. Man, it's kind of scary, the committal process of putting down something so expensive, so I wanna make sure I know. I ain't sure. gonna touch it, you're gonna do it. Oh shoot. You're gonna do it today. So the bike in question is Alexander's 5C. Now, he's had this for a while, he rode it, I had it in my storage unit for a while, lent it out to people. This bike has brought joy to a lot of people and it feels a little bit neglected now. The stanchion is scratched and there's oil going everywhere. I think we can put a longer dropper post in it. I think we can upgrade it, breathe new life into it and make sure it continues to bring joy to many people. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna use it as an excuse to get Alex's hands a little bit dirty. Yes, oh, I forgot, I gotta, hold on. Got this bad boy. When you put this on, you're doing work. Now I'm ready to work on the bike. I should get like a like shop attire. So if you've been following along, every single Berm Peak episode ends with it absolutely pouring outside and us not getting to ride. Today, I would like that to be different. We should both work on this bike together and try and get it done soon. It's just a matter of time before it starts raining again. Taking time bomb. You get started replacing that derailleur hanger and I'm gonna start taking the stuff off the front so we can replace the fork and the cockpit. So this fork is a Fox 36. It's actually a really good suspension fork, but there's a big, big scratch in the stanchion. And when you have a scratch in the stanchion, it damages all the seals and leaks oil. So this fork is gonna get donated to the parts bin. We're gonna repair it and somebody will get to use it. And in the meantime, you get to try out Bomber Z1. So we don't have a brand new headset for this build. So we're gonna take the crown race off the old fork and move it over to the new one, which we are going to do with a screwdriver carefully. This part used to actually have ball bearings rolling on it, but today with cartridge bearings and integrated headsets, the crown race is just to kind of adapt the fork to the headset you're using. Yeah, so you see now it's coming loose. Yeah. So we got the crown race off. So how do you put the crown race on the steer tube of a new fork? You got a baseball bat? Ooh, here's some grease, and then I'm gonna get you a tool. So this is a crown race setting system. You place this on the crown race that you're setting, Place it in here, and you whap it with a hammer. Perfect! Let's dry fit that and put a little mark on it so you know where to cut it. So we're gonna cut just a, just a little hair south of that so that there's we can no, tighten like, it down. There's no exact measurement, it's just a... I'm sure there's an exact measurement, but I just go just a little bit south of that. Wait, what are you doing? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you get through the first part, it's gonna go a lot faster. I probably could change that saw blade, but yeah. you think? <laughs> put some balls into it. You're almost done. There you go. Ooh, that's hot. Well, let's vacuum this real quick. Yeah, we can vacuum that up real quick. So part of this bike upgrade is gonna be getting an integrated multi-tool into your steer tube. I use the OneUp EDC. You guys have seen it a million times. You probably think I'm sponsored by OneUp by now. I'm not, I just love this thing. We're gonna put this in the vise and I'm gonna show you the threading kit that does this. So the way this tap works is you put this on here, you put this over it, it's in there straight put a little bit of oil on it. You are very generous with your, all your lubricants. <laughs> There's a lot of lubricant on there. Now you can start tapping. So keep going like a full turn. Now go back a quarter turn. So it's clearing the chips out of those threads so that it doesn't pack up with chips. That all came out of your brand new fork that you haven't even ridden yet. Yeah, you should have beautiful threads when you take that back out. Yeah, it'd be devastating if it was shaped like a waffle or something. <laughs> You know? Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. It's pretty sweet, right? So we just have to clean up some of this stuff just right. by hitting it with a brush. So the way this is gonna work is this cap is gonna go down into your fork and that's how it's gonna tighten it. Then your tool is gonna fit right inside of here and press right in. That's sick. But anyway, you're golden. You can assemble your headset now. Now you have everything you need. Now we're gonna get in your two stack washers. Uh -huh. Now we're gonna put your stem on. And we got new bars. And we got new bars carbon ones. Oh yeah. So what width do you run your bars? 780. 780, okay. You can just use that same exact tool, line it up with a saw, light pressure, 
go right through the bars. So cool, now all you gotta do is put all the stuff back in your cockpit. Let's rip out your old dropper post. I you don't have to it. take the seat off, just take the dropper post out. I wanna swap my seat. So swap it onto the new dropper post. Oh, true. <laughs> Yank <laughs> that crap. It's gonna start raining any minute. It's like your first day on Burn Peak. It's a 180 mil dropper. I can't believe how short this it's gonna is. It's going to be all the way out of my way. One up is like styled with this. All right, let's get everything installed, adjusted, and ready to go. Because if we're going to get in any riding today, we got to go now. It's a new day. 180 mil droppers. See, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. You got it, man. Oh, it's crazy how it's crazy. how far it drops you down now. It feels like a dirt jumper with it that far out of the way. So I think that just about covers everything. So while we're loading up the car, let's have a look at this new bike. So we're here at Canuga. we're gonna try again. Last time I got in like one lap, I barely even got to shake down my bike. So really, this is me and Alex getting our final adjustments in place and hopefully taking a real ride. I definitely need to raise my seat post. I didn't really take into account the, the su suspension compressing. Luckily, I don't have a tool on me, except I do have a tool on me. Boom. Now let's see if I can remember how to get this thing out. Yee, got it. Oh, I'm so excited, dude. Let's see how, oh, that's too much. I think maybe right there. Let's see how that feels. I'm not gonna put this away just yet. Oh, definitely, that's like optimal riding position right there. Feels super efficient. And then I just pop this back in. This thing is so nice. That first run felt so sketchy. It felt so sketchy, I didn't even go all the way down. I just pulled off to the side. <laughs> I gotta fix some stuff. So I think I'm gonna lower my rebound of my shock. I felt like I was getting bucked a little bit. I'm just gonna do one click for now. And I had what Seth would call whiskey levers. Look at this, my brakes. I want them loose, but this is just a little too loose. They were moving on me. So again, straight to this. You felt pretty solid? Yeah, this is a really good place to shake down a bike because those jumps are pretty low consequence and you can make the adjustments like this, go back, feel it out. I just changed my rebound a couple clicks because yeah. when I came out here last time, I didn't really get to ride any jump lines. Ha! Ah, I suck at that today. I was having an issue keeping my feet on the pedals earlier. So I backed off my rebound on my shock. Two clicks, it feels much better not having that issue. So I'm reverting back to 27.5 wheels for, for now. This wheel is 27.5, my other bike that I've been riding is 29. And I have to re-figure out my timing in the turn, so it's gonna take me a little while, I think. Both wheel sizes turn great. You just have to time it different, that's all it is. Yo, we went back up to the top and, and our bikes were laying on the ground and Seth just casually walks over and gets my bike. I was like, yo, you know that's mine, right? I had a bike just like that. <laughs> I think I cleared it, right? I cleared it, kind of. It wasn't pretty. I lost my pedal way up there and then I never had a chance to change it, so I wanna do it again. I gotta clean it up. So fun, though. I got sucked into my back wheel. I made a last minute judgment call. I didn't think I had enough speed, so I hit the shorter one. But then I, I feel like I over cleared it, so. And now I'm gonna, you're gonna hit the bigger one. Yeah, I'm gonna hit, try to go for the outside one now.
So last time I was here, whopping two days ago, I had a really bad crash right here. It was my first time down this trail and I wasn't being smart. I was, I made a rookie move and I was hitting it blind. But when I got to here and I rode straight off of that, like I was just gonna roll down, I hadn't realized there's a gap in this as well. <laughs> and all of a sudden my bike just goes, Phew! And now he's like, ah! I got a matching set of this under here. But I don't know, man. Are you totally chill hitting this? Yeah, yeah, I'll hit it right now. Hey. Yeah, this step up, would recommend 10 out of 10. It's just the fact that I crashed because like I'm nervous about this, not the not even the jump. I think I'm gonna skip it for today. Every time I crash, I'm like, I gotta be smart, I gotta be smarter. So I'm gonna do the smart thing. He just sent it. <laughs> oh! Oh yeah, I got it. This drop felt so good. Perfect. Dude, that was sick. That was really sick. <laughs> Everything worked out perfectly today. We got Alex's bike dialed. We actually rode. Th this was a immaculate afternoon of riding. Immaculate that was the afternoon. Most fun I've had filming in a while. It started. We heard thunder. It started drizzling, and it just went away. And we had perfect, just cool weather, overcast. Sent a bunch of stuff. Alex rode great. I rode great. Our bikes felt awesome. This never happens. Literal hero dirt. Everyone always says. What, like they had hero dirt? This is no joke hero dirt. Canuga is one of the best things that ever happened to Asheville for sure. Yo, and I'm stoked about today because I learned some stuff and I'm so stoked about everything that we've done to upgrade this bike. I've used this, this tool like five times already and the fork is feeling good, bike is feeling super fresh. It feels really good to give it the love it deserves and like revamp it. Thanks for the work and the help today getting this thing up to speed. Thanks for coming out. You know what we should do? Let's do one more lap because nothing could possibly go wrong from here. Dude, no? No. All right, let's go home. <laughs> Thanks for riding with us today. I'll see you next time. <laughs>